Hello, this is David Birch at Sarpath School of Navigation with a note on loading and viewing ASCAT GRIB files in the program Panoply. Uh, we have there's several other ways uh, to do that, which are tremendously easier. But uh, this is note, and and we have short videos on that. Our, but I want to do this one, which is rather specialized. Um, so this is our main index for all the things that we have at Starpath. We're trying to coordinate it so that we have links at this page, starpath.com slash ASCAT. And then there's a reminder here that our textbook, our new edition of our uh, third edition, has a, has a long extended section on ASCAT. And this is our index, and this is a page we'll work from. And so these are commercial products, Luck, Grib, Oceans, and Expedition. These are ways you can do it easily. You just click a button and download what I'm doing now. It's going to take a little longer. But uh, so this is the main page to start with. And basically, I'm making this little link right here that says video. And we're going to use this program Panoply. So the first thing you would do, we can, I can just show you now, you just go and go to this page panoply and there's that page and you can download the program it's a free program a really rather remarkable program you can view any kind of grib data or the net cdf data or any kind of government data can be viewed here but there is kind of a learning curve with this program so i'm going to just show a few straight uh, uh, a few of the pointers but that's the program so you download that there's a mac or pc version so that's the program we're going to use and then this is the video now and here's where the raw data is located right here but let's do something first here let's go to the main working source this is uh, ocean surface wind team and this is the graphic view of the data and we'll go over here at gibraltar this pass right here now look at this this is met and, and these are again the details one gets into when you have to when you're doing it all on your own this picture here is metop a that's ascending and then the descending a metop a and right behind metop a is a b well i say behind it could be in front of it i have to check that the other thing too is i'll put in the description a link to a, print, a printed article and that printed article has details and links and a, a, a few more uh, 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 details let's say and also it will include things that I may forgot to add in that in the uh, in the video but so this is A and B A and B are two that's METOP A and METOP B that's two different satellites that are put out by the Euromet uh, program that's measuring data and they're about uh, or maybe 50, 47, 50 minutes behind each other on uh, uh, just a slightly shifted track because the Earth is rotating this direction. But, uh, okay, so we're, let's just look at A for now. And then uh, we're going to look at this region right in there. So, so this, is, uh, this is one section of it, and we'll just look at this. But the, but the swath... The swath, uh, where are we going here, advanced scatter. The swath that we're going to download is everything that takes place within, within a given hour. <coughs> so we'll see, a whole, we'll see one of these swaths like that. So that's what we're after. Now, if you go back here to this page, here's the link to the raw data. If you click that data, you come to here. Okay, and so this is the data at NCEP. Yeah, NCEP. Now, if you look here, um, this is a, this stands ASCAT underscore AB. So these swaths that we're going to download here include both the A and the B. And so let's go back to our picture. This is, uh, so we're, an, okay, so we have to interpret these pictures to understand the times. This is a UTC that's valid here. It says 35 degrees, somewhere about here. So this satellite was right here at 2151 on um, 2151. So that's a UTC. Now we go back up here to the top and say, these are all the data on this, on this main page here. Whoops, not that page. On this page, this is all the data 
all the swaths that they have stored uh, that was updated at 1402 UTC and 22 hours earlier. So when we go back to this page, this is 2150, and it's all 22 hours earlier than August 8, 14. So that means this 2100 had to be back in August 7th. So now we know what we need. We are looking for the file if we want to look at this data in a grib vector format. We want to look at this file, valid 2150, August 7th. Okay. Now we come back to this page, the data. And these are like, uh, look at this, August 2nd to August 8th. So it looks like they have about a week, six days up there stored. And there's two times here. Okay, so this AB up here in the title, that stands for A and B. This AS here stands for ASCAT. So that's ASCAT swath. And this is, uh, this is uh, the year 18, 08, 07, 2201. Now, here's another date out here. This is a date it went online. And if you look at these, like let's say this is, uh, let's find one, 1500. So this is data that was valid at 1509, but notice it did not get posted until 1805, which is about, which is what we see here. In other words, this ASCAT data is, is what you would call near live. It's not live, it takes them three hours. It's a huge analytical process going on here. Uh, with actually several different institutes in this case. But it takes three hours from the actual time the satellite went overhead to when you see it. So, but that's, we, our maps, the weather maps that we're comparing it to are three hours old as well. So that works out, uh, that works out okay. Then the other thing to keep in mind that when you're choosing one of these to look at, See, the virtue of going in here yourself is you want to compare these to a forecast. So you would want to pick one of these to look at that's very close to a synoptic time, like 0031. That would be the 00 Zulu that you'd compare it to. Or here's one at, you know, 637. You know, the synoptic times they don't have here. 1243, so you don't, 1149. So there's, a, there's within about 10 minutes of the 12 Zulu map. Okay, so we're back to we want, uh, what did we want here? Um, we want 2150. So 2150 on the 7th. Here's 22, 22, uh, 2201, 2250. So it must be this one. So I'm going to just right click. Right click and save. Wait a minute, August 7th, 22. I'm just looking, I did it earlier and I got this one. This was uh, 1808072. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. So I just right click and save the file. Save the file. Okay. And then I'm going to save it here in the screenshots. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so that, this one here means I did it earlier. I did, I did try to check this to see if I, I got it right. Okay, so now we have the file in there, and then uh, just for the, and then I'll show you, if I just double click this, this is gonna open, and I've got my program set up to view this in LuckGrib. So this is what, that's gonna be the easy way to do it, but I could just click that right in LuckGrib and get the data directly that way, but, um, We'll come back to that. Now we go to Panoply. So we've got the data file we want. We go to, okay, go to Panoply. Panoply. And then do File, Open. Okay. And I put that in the screenshots. Date modified. Okay, that must be the file. Okay, so that's the way it looks when you open it in Panoply. And again, it's a, there's a bit of a learning curve. There's some help files with this, but frankly, not many. You have to just start banging on it and f f 
figure it out. Okay, so this is the way it opens up. And I'm just going to go through and, and just outline this, how you do it. And then you... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to take, so once it shows up, this is showing what's in, and the way the data is presented, there is a U and a V component as like east, west, and north, south, and so you just take one of those, either one, doesn't matter, and then you just say create a plot, and that's all going to be okay the way it is, and you say create. Okay, so there's the data, so it shows a swath, but this is not at all vectors. This is just a scalar of the wind speeds in that direction. So that's step one. So then you come back to this, cancel. Then you come back to this one, and here you say, that's the first one I did. Now there's a second one. Now you say combine plot. And now we only have one open, so we know it's going to add it to the right one. If you have two or three things open, then you got to go and drop down here and look, look for the right thing. But we only have one. So you combine. Now, it's combined those two things, but look what it did. Here's, it just took, and you have options here. This just took the first data minus the second data. That doesn't mean anything to us. What we want to do is take on this array tab here, you go over here, and you get down and say create the vector magnitude. Okay, now we have what we want. We have vectors up here. And there is, oh, let me see if I've got that. Oh, yeah, look, I even got it. I made this to show. The Panoply has a few of these keystrokes outlined, but not all of them. And so here, uh, drag zoom is command plus left click. Command plus left click. So I'll move that aside. So I'm, now that's a PC command. Uh, in that would be different. In the, so command and left click. Where's Gibraltar here? Uh, this area here. Now, once you've done that, that's distorted the map because we just grabbed some random places. Then you have to go back to the map and you hit fixed proportions. Okay, now we're getting there. Um, now, array, what do we want to do? That's okay. Scale. Now, um, you would change, this is taking all the winds because it doesn't know ahead of time what's going on, and it also was, it started out using just scalars of the direction of the east or west. So that could be plus or minus. So we change this to zero. And then we go up to, uh, um, well, let's do this first here. Hang on just a minute. Um, vector, let me, let's change it to scalar. And then we go, let's change the units to knots. Okay, there's knots. And then uh, if we say zero, let's just see what happens if I hit fit data. Oh, okay. So in this particular view I'm looking at, it ranges from zero to 30. So I'm going to change this to zero to 30 for the time being. Now you can always, can always change that. Say enter. Now that sets a scale bar here. Now, now we can look into Gibraltar. Uh, now, again, you have, to, you have to always go back and fix this. And there's... Uh, so, fix proportions. So you can zoom in. So there now, we're looking at the winds around here. And there's another... What was the command? Let me come back to the commands. If you want to read a value, Value at the cursor is uh, option plus left click. Okay, so if I want to read the value here, I put option, that changes it. Oh, wait a minute, what's wrong? Value at the cursor, option, maybe I have to click that first. Yeah, okay, click that first. Now, option, they get the question mark. See, now it's going to tell me the value here. Oh, wait a minute, it's uh, 25 knots. If I click it here, that's a one, oh, 1.5 knots. 
see the blue scale clear down here. So that is a uh, that is it. That so th 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 there you're. It's a painful process in a sense, but there you're showing that. And you can also just what's the command here to zoom out? Command zoom out. Option command minus. Option command minus. And then you can look at uh, the full swath. And also, if you want to just go over here, that would be option, click, and it's got the speed. So that's viewing, again, that's a process of viewing a grib file, I mean a grib formatted ASCAT wind in uh, Panoply. And um, I'll put the other couple videos up of showing it how easy it is. It's easy on multiple levels on Luck Grib or Oceans uh, or uh, Expedition directly. So that's the end of this. Again, if I if I realize I've forgotten things, I'll put it in the link I'm going to show.